Yo, ladies and gentlemen, I am C. Sidman, and welcome back to Space Engineers Weekly Workshop Roundup number 12. And as always, I'm bringing you through the hot ships and through the hot mods from the Space Engineers Steam Workshop page for the last week. So, um, we are starting things off immediately with industrial size DX11 by Scython, which adds three new production blocks to ramp up your industry. The advanced assembler that this guy we're panning by right now, uh, which is 2x2x2, two by two by two, is 12 times fast. Uh, it's a standard assembler, but uses only 10 times the power and has, has 12 upgrade slots. The guy in the middle here is the advanced refinery, which again is 12 times faster and uses 10 times the power. It has 14 upgrade slots as well, and the factory uh, is 3x2x2. Three by two by two and is a special, uh, special assembler that can only produce basic components like steel plates, but 20 pieces at a time while only using 10 times the power as 12 upgrade slots. And by the way, I'm going to warn you ahead of time, I didn't actually catch any footage of the factory. Oh, I, think, uh, I think I did, but for, for some reason it didn't record or something, but yeah. So this is the uh, advanced assembler, and yeah, it's a little, a little compact sort of block. Uh, like I said, 12 upgrade slots, and then I really like this detail here. This window on the side uh, lets you look in, and see every, uh, uh, see everything as it's being worked on. Well, would if it was, uh, if it was animated, but unfortunately, I don't think it is. But this is the advanced refinery. Um, once again, very awesome looking mesh. I, I have to say really cool looking mesh uh, lots of detail in there by the way these meshes look almost exactly the same on DX11 so um, kind of unsure why he uh, specified DX11 in the title would and I, uh, I'm not sure DX11 is absolutely necessary I think there are a couple of texture issues with them if you don't use um, or if you use uh, DX9 uh, well, then again, I'm using DX on this, but uh, now we are moving on to the to SI interior walls by Commander Oz, and this is literally it. Uh, at least when I subscribe to it, it may have they may have add some uh, add some other blocks because the mod author said he was gonna add a couple of other blocks. But yeah, this is. Now, this was the only one when I subscribed to it. Um, yeah, so it's got 4K tint textures, which is huge. Uh, that's a massive texture size. Now, obviously, it's DX11 compatible. Um, uh, things to do as of when I subscribed to it, which is a couple of days ago. Uh, corner sections, floor and ceiling sections, and construction progress and additional levels of detail now uh, this is it but uh, yeah uh, just look at the detail on this thing just uh, look at it. it's very very well detailed I especially like those little bars uh, they're running across I'm gonna get in here and just yeah show you a little bit closer up some of the detail look at the texture the texture on this is absolutely ludicrous that's what 4K textures look like, ladies and gentlemen. They look insane. Um, so yeah, well now we are moving on to long range jump drive by Super 07. Large ship only, heavy duty jump drive meant for large capital ships or carriers. DX9 and DX11 ready requires a lot of components to build. Unfortunately, I'm not exactly sure what those components are. I did ask the mod creator what they were, but he didn't get back to me in time, so that's rather unfortunate. But if you use this in survival, then you'll know. Specs 75 million kilometer range, ladies and gentlemen. 75 million kilometer range. In fact, in game, it's so long uh, the range is so huge that it actually can't display all of it when it's showing you the maximum range ridiculous by the way i was unable to um show you uh, to record footage of it actually working because once you warp sometimes the ship disappears and that happened for me so rather unfortunate um 
So yeah, that's uh, that's that, and now we are moving on to the Gargoyle Dropship recommended for DX9 by Defins. It's a multi-role VTOL vertical takeoff and landing uh, design that was originally done up by Karanak on DVNR. There's a link to Karanak's DVNR page in the description. Uh, the interior design was uh, inspired by the Steam user Thomas Foolery, who created the brawler so now we're gonna go on a little bit of a tour of the ship's insides here speaking of interior so out back you have a very small drone bay here with three connectors some airlock controls on the left there those are those buttons and then as we move forward uh, yeah you, uh, you see move past the, the sort of connectors there and into the main crew seating area it's got two doors on either side unfortunately not airlock so you do have to depressurize it before you get in and yeah <laughs> hey guys what's up <laughs> so that, that's kind of cool but so yeah you do have to depressurize before you uh, leave otherwise you're going to just get blown out and now we move up through the systems control area and up top into the main cockpit which is uh, uh which is well within the ship like it doesn't actually have any it doesn't have any windows to the outside really any weak points so it's very well very well defended and some other controls off to the side there i'm not exactly sure what they do i can't remember precisely but so now we're moving back to the engineering bay uh, now this is all kind of well hidden so um, yeah it is um, you're not gonna really notice there unless you uh, in, unless you go through the front door and then look up kind of hard to kind of hard to find at first but I did eventually find all that stuff so now we're flying the ship and yep as you can see, the engines are on those uh, uh, VTOL rotor assemblies off to the side up front there. So I'm just poking around with controls at this point, trying to figure out what everything does. And finally, I managed to get the uh, finally I managed to get the engines rotate into place. You actually uh, to use the engines you actually have to trigger them using the hotbar there which is a little bit confusing at first and yeah it's it's kind of hard to control this way um, specifically because um, engines that are on rotors like these are they're technically considered on separate grids as one of the guns is misassigned and um, decides to attack the modern platform but so yeah the issue with VTOL assemblies in space engineers is that they have to be lined up perfectly with the ship's center of mass otherwise they're going to be pushing uh, up or down one way or the other kind of uh, kind of annoying in this case it actually wants to push down on the ship uh, so um, as you can see on the hot bar you've got uh, you've got four separate uh, controls for the engines. Uh, basically, forward and reverse thrust, and you've got two. Uh, and you got two buttons assigned to control the rotors to sort of vector your thrust using the rotors. Um, it, it's a little bit. It's a little bit tricky to fly uh, uh, if you don't know exactly what you're doing. So right now, I'm just trying. To uh, sort of turn around and get stopped pretty much so I can attempt a landing on the mod reviewing platform which spoiler warning I do eventually fail kind of annoying that uh, but I'm sure once I uh, fly the ship enough I'll get the sort of handling of it down uh, pretty quickly so I'm just turning around now and I think I've uh, I think I've got stopped enough so that uh, I can attempt a landing. The thing with this ship is it doesn't have any side thrust, so um, you have to you have to sort of uh, 
turn your ship, uh, turn the ship around all different ways to try to get it uh, stopped if it, uh, if you uh, get any sort of side movement at all. Kind of, kind of annoying, but so I'm coming over the top of the mod reviewing platform now and well I'm trying operative or trying to get into place to land unfortunately I don't think I can quite cancel out the side motion well enough to be able to get it to stop uh, well I do get stopped uh, never mind I'm then so now I'm playing around with the engines to try to get them to rotate into place which is easier said than done it really is easier said than done with a VTOL design so eventually I do give up like I said I'm just poking around right now trying to figure out what to do so yeah I'm just uh, I am extraordinarily confused by this thing. Like I said, very hard to get your head around uh, once you're trying to, uh, uh, before you try to, uh, well, at first, basically. So now we're moving on to the Jackal Buggy by MGE Leon Sir GT, which works only with natural and enhanced gravity. That's right, this thing has absolutely no artificial mass blocks it's light and fast off-road transport for a plant's exploration and yeah it is light it's just over 10,000 kilograms so definitely definitely a very light ship it's got uh, it's got plenty of storage it's powered by I believe a small reactor um, doesn't have any thrusters or anything uh, uh, that's uh, I believe that's a small reactor there it's got an antenna on the back a little cargo container out back as well uh, just getting a little bit of a close-up of some of the detail there I really like the way you use the scaffolding uh, to make it look almost like uh, almost like sort of a bare part of the frame there it does have it does have upward thrust just to help you get over some of the uh, some of the more challenging terrain. It doesn't uh, it doesn't really produce that much power though, so that's a little bit uh, that's a little bit strange. So you may want to kick the power up in order to get over some of the even more challenging terrain. And then a little bit of a detail of the side here. I like the fact that it's got a headlight there and. Yeah, the the side it the side things uh, remind me sort of uh, uh, remind me sort of of a fish kind of uh, kind of thing. So it, it looks cool. It's definitely a distinct, very alien looking buggy. Not really what you sort of uh, not really what you'd sort of expect uh, expect from the Space Engineers Steam Workshop page, given that many of the, the designs there tend to be based more around sort of uh, human looking designs I'm not sure if I'm even making any sense at this point but I very rarely do on this channel so that's nothing new uh, so this is me trying to drive around as you can see it is very very slidey indeed but that's more so the fault of the game than the mod creator I think because wheels in this game even when you've got the same cranked up all the way to the maximum they still have absolutely no friction compared to what I think they should have. They should they should definitely have a lot more friction uh, in this game. Uh, then again, asteroids are technically made of a different sort of material that I believe may have a little bit less friction. And this is made out of uh, this is basically a giant uh, man-made asteroid here. Doesn't take me long to get stuck because I just can't get it stopped in time, but I do get it freed there very quickly. Uh, due in no small part to this thing's a uh, huge ride height. It's a pretty tall vehicle for a small land vehicle. So now I'm just uh, I'm just adjusting some of the things, which is something you will want to do. I'm adjusting the friction the power and the strength here 
to um, sort of get to handle a little bit better. I'm also looking at some different options there, but eventually I decide against them. So, yeah, as you can see, after I crank those three settings up, it handles a lot better. It's got, it's got a lot more grip. It's a lot faster, uh, but it's still not quite good, and I do roll it here. I, I spent quite a while trying to get this thing to roll back over, but eventually I gave up and decided to paste in a new one. And while I was at, I decided to put some artificial mass there just to see what happened. And as you can see, with artificial mass, well, it weighs a lot more, which is one thing, but that actually helps the handling, and so does the artificial mass drastically once you turn on. It really helps the handling. Uh, when you've got artificial mass there. Uh, it, like I said, still still not absolutely perfect though. Uh, it does take quite some effort to get stopped. A lot of holding the S key to try to control this thing basically. Yep, S is going to pretty much be... Uh, perhaps uh, it's pretty pretty much gonna be your most used key while you're trying to drive this thing. You're just gonna spend pretty much half the time going stop, stop, and it will stop eventually after about four million or so yards. Uh, so very very difficult to drive even with the artificial mass and the adjusted settings, uh, if only for the fact that. And there's uh, that's very very hard to stop so now I'm just getting rid of the artificial mass here and and I'm trying out my uh, my adjusted settings on this terrain it's uh, it's quite good off-roading for uh, uh, for a vehicle in space engineers especially with the natural gravity mod it's still a little bit floaty, and in fact, it's still very floaty, but that's what the upwards uh, thrusters on the bottom are there for to sort of help you uh, uh, to sort of help you uh, surmount some of the more challenging terrain as I'm trying to get stopped here and just drive it up there. Yep, and then go land there. It's pretty decent. It's pretty okay, but I do get stuck just a little there. I really wanted to make it back onto the top of that little hill there, but unfortunately I wasn't able to quite stay there. Uh, but it does pull through and uh, get to the top, uh, uh, get over that cliff there. And then it does it, I believe it does it again here. So, pretty good at off-roading this thing. I'm just running it through its paces right now. I'll give you sort of a general idea of exactly how good it is. It's not going to climb, like, any really massive, huge mountains or anything. But, as long as you stay on relatively flat terrain, it should do you just fine with the adjusted settings there. So, a little bit of a flat ground run. Uh, yep. That, that's something that the wheels do uh, they, um, when you're when you're uh, when you get to certain speed in land vehicles they just sort of start freaking out for some reason very strange and it's not just this mod it is it is something in the game something in the physics engine so very strange but now we're moving on to the final ship Imperial Clipper by Urian 74 absolutely gorgeous ship and like r really just look at this beast beautiful beauty incarnate that was a run along the side there it's got uh, it, it's pretty detailed it's pretty detailed both inside and out uh, as we are about to see as we go through the window into the cockpit uh, yeah massive huge view outside lots of sci-fi LCD displays just gorgeous gorgeous lighting that's the thing about the interior of this ship the lighting is oh it is fantastic it's easily some of the best I've ever seen in space engineers 
Yuri in 74 just has this talent for uh, for just discerning the right uh, the right lighting in uh, the for the room. So up here, just a sort of observation deck. There's a there's an observation deck on the other side as well, and then uh, you can see sort of the crews there. Now, if we turn around, this is the way you get to the lower hangar because there are two hangars on this ship. There's the top hangar and excuse me and a bottom leg uh, and a bottom hanger this is how you get to the bottom hanger it's a little bit more of a it's a little bit more roundabout than getting to the top hanger but so you go down here and you go into this room with the with the beacon and it looks like a couple of batteries I think those are batteries anyway then you got this uh, nice wide hallway here with the cryopods on the right and um, the sort of multi-colors interior wall there. I'm not sure what interior wall that is with the, like, uh, with the strange German colors on the bottom. And then it's past uh, the first set of stairs and then past these huge storage containers to the end of this hallway. This is exactly what I was talking about. Look at this lighting here. The contrast between uh, the lot, the uh, individual colors, the individual line colors, and uh, just the overall, uh, just the overall vibe of the lighting, just, just the overall feel. It re the lighting really serves the feel very well in this ship. It just enhances the feel tenfold, I think. And then, yep, uh, we come. Uh, we come to this area which has a medical station on the left there and then through the airlock or into the airlock I should say uh, past some oxygen tanks and then that is the rear hangar now we're just gonna sort of fly out the back here uh, yeah absolutely gorgeous ship the lighting, like I said, is just how how does he how does he do that? How does he, how does he choose that lighting? But anyway, so we are now flying through the crew area here, uh, which is where well, obviously where everybody sits. And then this is how I get to the top hanger. You sort of step off the side of the staircase there, and then you find yourself in this empty space. You continue through that, and then. Uh, that, through that sort of preparation room there and then boom you're in the rear hangar and once again out the back and then at the top of the staircase I believe we're going to the top of the staircase anyway yes we are uh, this is just sort of an oversight area for the top uh, for the top uh, hangers preparation room so you can stand on the glass and look down at your friends as they're getting ready now uh, I believe uh, the reason those uh, those astronaut models are white there is because I'm running DX9 rather than DX11. Uh, so we are back in the we are back in the um, uh, in the bomb hangar. I'm just showing you some of the airlock controls. Uh, now the now each hangar does come with the airlock controls, but um, uh, they differ between them. So. Uh, the button on the left, as you saw, opens the uh, opens the outside door. The button in the middle there opens the back door, and then the button on the right pressurizes or depressurizes the room. So this one has um, separate controls for the oxygen system, whereas the top one does not. So here we are in the top hanger now, and the. Uh, the oxygen uh, sort of pressurization system controls are actually uh, triggered by uh, the same buttons as the hangar doors. So, um, if you were to open, uh, if you were to open the outside door, it'll shut that door. It'll shut the inside door first, and then set the vent to depressurize. And then after a while, it'll open the outside door 
So the uh, other button's basically the same thing as we just saw. So now we're gonna give it a fly. And as you're about to see, this is easily one of the fastest large ships we've ever tested here on the Space Engineers uh, Weekly Workshop Roundup. Um, huge speed. Very light ship, as you can see, only 5,142,800 kilograms. And that allows it to have some absolutely ridiculous acceleration. We're already up to the maximum speed there, uh, which is 104.5 meters per second, the limit imposed by the game engine. And yeah, it gets stopped and turned so well, also. Uh, yeah. This is definitely a clipper. You, you can tell by just how fast it is. So now we are approaching this asteroid. You, if you're not sitting down, you're going to want to sit down. Because, man, what I'm about to show you is incredible. Look at this thing's handling. Look at this thing's handling. It's absolutely incredible. This is small ship style handling. And we are on a large ship. Absolutely one of the best handling sort of ships that I've personally ever had the pleasure of dealing with you on the Space Engineers Weekly Workshop Roundup. Yep, yeah, uh, just fantastic, fantastic ship. All these mods were absolutely great. It was an amazing week for the Space Engineers Weekly Workshop uh, uh, Roundup. So if you like this video, then go ahead and pitch up that like button. If you really, really liked it and you want to see more, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hey, I've been MC Zinman. You've been awesome. I'll see you guys in the next video. MCZ out. Man, fantastic freaking ship. Oh my god.